Whether you're buying a new home or are an existing homeowner, you want to save money on your home insurance. You're looking for ways to save without a lot of time and effort. That's where Allstate can help. Check Allstate first and you could save $574 on your home insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in every state. Based on the national average annual savings for new home insurance customers surveyed in 2023 who switched to Allstate and reported savings. Savings vary. Handsome Chatting with friends on the Handsome Pod Chatting with friends on the Handsome Pod Cheers! Cheers! Welcome to the Handsome Pod! It's Fortune Feimster. And I'm Mae Martin. And I remain... Tig Notaro. <laughs> and we're us. We are fortune. We're us. Oh my God. Uh, Nobody else is us. Just us. Right. Yeah. Unless well, they we, pretend unless, to be. Yeah, or some quantum like like other, you know, parallel universe where we're the same. It's us just making different choices. Yeah, but it's them. Yeah, it's them. You're right. Yeah, it's still yeah, not us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what I wanted to tell you is um, I was in a, a tiny town. Oh, mm. congrats. And I was in a tiny town too. You go first. Okay. All right. I was in a tiny town. Somebody yelled, yeah, ghost. No way. <laughs> and I turned and I was like, yeah, ghost. And they stuck their hand out of the car and did like a rock and roll sign with their hand. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, that's my kids amazing. were like, what did they say? And I was like, ah, <laughs> they yelled, yeah, ghost. They believe in ghosts. Long story. You're like, it's just something they do in this tiny town. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's so it's so fun, especially when people are real casual about it, because a woman actually was really casual about it to me also in another tiny town. I was going to get in my rental car, and she made some handsome reference, and I just... <laughs> oh, I think she was like, yeah, oh, keep it handsome. I was like, yeah, you too. And then I just got in the car and that was the end of that. I like that. Yeah. Fortune, totally. what tiny town were you in? I went to a tiny town in Canada. I had a few days off of work and Jackson, I went up to a town called Picton. I know it. Uh, you do? Yeah. It's up around cottage country. Like, but yeah. Yeah. I didn't know Canadians. Uh, well, I, knew, I found this out last time I filmed in Canada, but they love them some cottages and lakes. Yes, they yeah, do. I mean that's like a, the, our our, th- our core thing. That's yeah. like our whole cultural identity is like, well, yeah, I went to get some Rocky Road ice cream, went up to the cottage. But. Summertime Canada, it's all about them lakes, especially in mm. Ontario, because mm-hmm. there are tons of lakes. So we wanted to get in on this cottage situation and have the most delightful time. They have all these wineries up there, but what I love the most is that. It's near all these farms, and so all the restaurants in town are very unassuming, and they all have, like, amazing food because it's coming from all these local farms, and I was like, I was like, Tig would be so proud of me. Oh, is that where you tagged me? You tagged me? Yeah, yeah. I tagged you on that winery, and then Jax was like, post it tomorrow because we're still here, and sometimes I usually don't post things in the moment that I'm there. Right. Right. I post them like a day later or something. Yeah. A couple a week later. Um, so that, yeah, I, well, cause Jackson and I went to a a winery cause she was excited because they were vegan. Jax isn't totally, Jax isn't vegan, but she eats, uh, she doesn't eat dairy. Mm -hmm. Um, and they had all this plant-based cheese and, uh, she got a cheese platter that was all plant-based and they were the first, winery that was vegan certified and so wow. tag tig oh man wow. uh, how was the cheese it was really good it was yeah. uh it was tasty um yeah. it was really cool platter and it looked very fancy and um she was pumped because she doesn't usually get to partake in the cheese yeah i'm feeling patriotic i like that yeah it was yeah. amazing we went to these great little restaurants that had all this fresh food and i went i went to this one place called Stella's owned by lesbians, I believe. Oh. Um, and they had the freshest vegetables. <laughs> lesbians so tasty. Always do. They Sprinkled always the steak dust. Yes. And I, I, the vegetables <laughs> were like my favorite part. I was like, Tig would be so pumped right now. I That's would. great. Yeah. These I love fresh a fresh vegetables. vegetable. I you would love the, you would love it up there. Well, you know, uh, I I ordered this um, vegan grain bowl at a restaurant mm-hmm. that will go forever unnamed 
because okay. <laughs> I could not believe how there was zero, there was no taste. It was just no. grain. Oh. Oh, well, no, there were grains in there, sweet potatoes, uh, all sorts of vegetables. It was, it looked like a dream come true. And I could not believe that I, I couldn't have more than maybe five bites. I was like, how oh. did you mess this up? Yeah. And they completely messed it up. I like Man. plain flavor. I have a very simple palate. I would have been like, oh, it's like you would have baby gobbled food. this yeah. right up. Yeah. Oh, you don't you don't like too many flavors in your mouth? I don't well, I, I don't flavors. know. I don't I don't think I do. But I, I have a I'm I'm in Toronto as well. So the crew is super Canadian and we're mm -hmm. and uh I have this driver called Joe who I really Hi. love peeling the layer. My name is Joe. Hey. Oh, I have boy. a wife and three kids and I work <laughs> in a button factory. One day my boss came and he said, Joe, Joe, are you busy? You're busy I said so. No. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh. Shout out, Joe. Shout out, Joe. So I I like peeling the layers back of this guy. He looks, he's sort of in his sixties. And, um, I know I, I, at first he was really shy and quiet and then now I'm learning. So he has this farm up in Sudbury that he goes every weekend back to his farm. Classic he's got a Joe. rooster called Jeff Ooh. and he brought me farm fresh eggs. Nice. Then he brought me, uh, some smoked mackerel or something. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember what type of fish but it was delicious. And then now I'm, I worry I've peeled too many layers back. He's like, yeah, I'll bring you some moose meat. Eh? And I was like, I don't know if I, 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 think oh, I, eat, that, I don't yeah. know. And he said, I'll cook it up for you. Um, but Have so, you had then, moose? No, never. And I, 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 yeah, no. And then the new thing that's really stuck in my head is he said, it was like three in the morning, he's driving me back and he goes, yeah, I got a video of uh, my buddy Greg wrestling a bear, 1993, uh, in a bar. He goes, I got <laughs> a VHS a of it. Yeah. Got a VHS of it, eh? But we'll have to get a VCR so I can show you. And that's all I know. And it's in my head. Wow. And I'm going to have to see this video. So, you, so this guy, yeah. I mean, when you film VHS back in the 90s, you have a huge clump of equipment on your shoulder. He was into, he said he was into editing and filming and he was in a bar and his friend Greg, there was a bear who had been mm -hmm. maybe rescued from a circus or trained from a cub. Oh, and it didn't just come into the bar. Oh, oh that's what no, I was thinking No, it was, too. you could win $1,000 if you could, if you could wrestle the bear. And I mean, and he said, oh, you couldn't do it nowadays. <laughs> oh my uh, God. That poor bear took with. so many Can't wrong do that turns. Now. <laughs> I know, of course, but it's, and at first I thought, oh, I don't know if I, and now I'm like, I have to see it. He said, oh, that's really cool. That makes me think of that Nate Brigazzi joke in his, maybe his latest special where he talks about how you could uh, box an orangutan at a circus back in the day. No one oh really, my God, it was no better than I. It was pre-internet, so people couldn't warn each other. I mean, don't no, it, wrestle and don't, don't, <laughs> uh, they're unbelievably strong. Like, yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't Google like how strong is an orangutan. Right. Right. <laughs> I think if Pretty anyone funny. lured me somewhere into wrestling anything or anyone, I, I don't <laughs> have to tap going, out. Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't, you don't I strike me like, as a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be like, Oh, <laughs> let me at that. I got this. I'm always like, I'm certain you could take me down. I've seen videos of the big kangaroos where a guy that had to box a kangaroo, you know, the big massive ones with the huge muscles? Oh, uh, yeah, Australia? I've been yeah, face to yeah. face with them. You, you have? have? Yeah, I was in Australia with Kate Micucci, and... Uh, that, <laughs> that sounds sexual. Uh, well, it wasn't. Micucci. Uh, fortune Marie. Don't mess with Micucci. Fortune Marie. Do you think Kate's ever gotten that? Not once your in her life. My Coochie. What about your Coochie? She's never heard this. There's <laughs> no have. chance. There's no chance she's Ma ever heard Ma Ma Coochie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I digress. Continue. You sure do. Um, so you're with Micucci so in I'm Australia. With Kate. Um, and better known it, as Makuchi. Oh, fortune. <laughs> my God, my God, my God in heaven. I'm with Kate, my dear friend, Kate Makuchi, who does not deserve to be treated no, this way. She's, I love Kate for sure. She is Me a too. delightful human being. She is. And yeah, my, um, my apologies, Kate. We had heard that there were kangaroos 
at a golf course that, that this oh, no. golf course they hang out at. And we're like, and she's like, oh, gee whiz, Tig, we got to go, you know? And so she we does go. sound like that. That's yeah. more offensive than Makuchi. Oh, gee what whiz, Tig, we got to go. Whiz, I mean, that's how Kate talks. And that's why <laughs> yeah. everyone adores her. So and she, she might also love that her last name is Makuchi. Fortune Marie. <laughs> so Kate and I go find this golf course. And we have, you know, those old like flip video cameras from, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't even know, mid 2000. I don't, I don't Yeah, a little remember. camcorder. Yeah, they're really tiny. It's not a camcorder on the shoulder situation. And uh-huh. we're filming each other at this golf course. This huge, I mean, these are like muscular men, like seven, eight foot tall men that the, the bot, they're so big, these kangaroos Keep talking. And, we're, <laughs> and we're just like, oh, you know, like, oh my God, look at this. And I'm like, kind of on a, in a standoff with this one kangaroo and, and Kate's like, Tig. oh, geez, Tig, you know, and we're, ha- we're thinking we're having a grand old time. Then we go meet my friend. I don't know if you're familiar with the incredibly talented musician from Sweden, Jens Lechman. We meet him for dinner and we're telling him about our day. And he's like, what? He was like, you were face to face. He was like, they are, they're violent creatures. And we were like, like, what? It's like they're on steroids. Yeah, Nobody told us. Yeah, they could have beat the shit out of you not just that he said what they do is they pin you down use their huge (gasps) feet leg situation to kick your guts out that's how they kill you so we were laughing so hard thinking about (laughs) like if that had happened to me (laughs) that my wikipedia page would have said at the bottom the disembowelment of (laughs) tomorrow and then just describe the gory detail of when a kangaroo kicked my intestines out of my body how close were you oh my god like an arm's like length and i was like oh my god <laughs> it's just like hey there hey, you know? hey there Ooh. buddy yeah i mean we just we thought it was essentially like we thought they were like large squirrels yeah which that they are crazy. not yeah they're that's a wild animal to evolve eh? like like yeah. how, why why did that happen why do they need to be so strong they're aren't they eating like bed like leaves well i don't know that's like vegans i mean you know <laughs> right right <laughs> I was hoping you were like, then we met up with our friend Larry McCooter. And um, I cannot <laughs> oh believe Lord. you are going back to this oh absolute nonsense. I was nonsense. So sitting there with Larry McCooter and Kate McGucci. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him about how I almost died. How old are you? <laughs> tell, us how, tell us your age. Tell I'm us. 25. I can finally rent a car. <laughs> <laughs> but that is crazy you did get very lucky that yeah you this the- podcast almost didn't happen yeah. you know well because i just i've seen videos of of like men having to like punch these things because the 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 kangaroo was trying to eat their dog yeah so would you rather you wait do kangaroos eat dogs that's a good question i brushed well, over I, that wait, too wait, fast i, I, I thought don't they eat know. leaves I thought well, they. I don't leaves. know. Maybe it wasn't trying to eat it. It was trying to kill it. It was trying to May, do something. Could you come to up it. with a May fact or something? Well, yeah. What I know about them <laughs> is that the babies, when they're born, are the size of a mouse. So the babies are born way too early, and then the little mouse has to crawl up from the makuchi and and get into the pouch, and then germinates once outside of the body. So like it's born, it's still a little tiny worm fetus. So why are like, you saying they're born way on. too early? Are they? Um, yeah, well, kangaroos like, you know, are herbivores. So you know, they're yeah, they trying don't to eat, eat a dog. What, I the, didn't know they didn't eat me. Okay, then why they, are you spreading fake I'm news? I'm saying that <laughs> it was clearly trying to kill the dog. I, I guess it wasn't trying to eat it, but it was trying to kill it. Isn't that so dangerous to have your little fetus just tucked in a little pocket that you're wearing on the outside of your bod instead of... like some Most animals, they're born, they fall, they hit the ground running, they're off. Right. I mean, on my old podcast uh, where we covered documentaries, we talked, we watched the ep- the uh, documentary, um, and actually we just watched this on vacation with Max and Finn, the March of the Penguins. 
Oh, yeah. So good. Such an incredible documentary. But what I started um, was a, a chant after watching that. I was like, give penguins a pouch. Give, give penguins a pouch. A pouch. Because uh, these eggs yeah. drop out. And then a yeah. penguin has to balance it on their toes with their like front bottom belly hanging over to keep the egg warm. Yeah, and that, I get a test. That's not easy. That is not <laughs> easy. And so, yeah, my God, so give penguins a pouch. a pouch. Why are kangaroos getting them over a penguin? Can we make <sighs> merch that's a sticker that says give penguins a pouch? We can, but it's connected to my old podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> there are 365 days in a year, which means there are 365 days when you might need to buy someone a birthday present. Why not simplify the process with an Aura digital picture frame? Jags and I actually gave my mom Ginger an Aura frame for Christmas. It was super easy. I downloaded the app. I found a bunch of pictures of me and, and my family and, and my dog. And we put it on the Aura app and we gave my mom this frame for Christmas. And I promise you, she calls me like once a week to tell me how much she loves this frame because she's always asking me for pictures and I can just download them right there to the Aura frame. It's really really a great gift. And right now, Aura is having their very first friends and family sale. And we've got an exclusive offer just for our listeners. For limited time only, you can get $35 off their best-selling frame by visiting AuraFrames.com and using the promo code HANDSOME at checkout. That's A-U-R-A frames.com, promo code HANDSOME. This is the best offer of the season, so don't miss out. Terms and conditions apply. This podcast is supported by FX's English Teacher, a new comedy created by and starring Brian Jordan Alvarez and from the executive producer that brought you What We Do in the Shadows. English Teacher follows Evan, a teacher in Austin, Texas, who learns if it's really possible to be your full self at your job while often finding himself at the intersection of the personal, professional, and political aspects of working at a high school. FX's English Teacher premieres September 2nd on FX, stream on Hulu. After watching that documentary, you tell me if you are not on board with Give penguins, Give penguins a pouch. Give penguins a pouch. That's the chant. We should never, the three of us, be at a protest together. No. <laughs> I just learned that uh, that um, elephants worship the moon. Like uh, elephants have like a religiosity. Like they bury their dead. They'll make a circle, and when it's a full moon, they'll wave a branch in their at the moon, like celebrate it. Oh, Tig, you're pointing at Elefante there in the background. Yeah, thin we, forgot stuffed we have, animal, Elefante. We, we're in the presence yes. of a mystical beast. Yes, indeed. I guess I don't really know many facts about elephants in general, but I definitely didn't know that. Mm. Isn't that mm. wild to think that they have like a mysticism to like they are doing things purely out of, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a, a weird thing that I heard. Please, please. <laughs> give me, I give really me, give me. It. <laughs> give me, oh, give me, give me, give me. Okay, I'm going to tell it to you and then you tell me if it's as weird as I think it is. Okay. Okay, okay so uh, my friend Carolyn Taylor, who's already like a very mystically inclined person, sort of sees signs everywhere and things. Mm. So she lives up in, in uh, Prince Edward County, like this little town in Ontario. And That's with a bunch the area of, I was in. Yeah, totally. Prince Edward yeah. County. Yeah. Yeah. Vegan cheese. Is a, a lot yep. of vegans up there, and she has a friend called a of, Serena. A lot of gays up there, too. Well, exactly. So they <laughs> uh, walk between their houses. They go through these long walks where they talk, mm -hmm. and they walk kind of back and forth between their houses. And one day they said, hey, we should measure, we should count the steps, see how many steps are a part of our houses. So they're like, one, two, three. They get to 926. They mm -hmm. double check it. They triple check it. They're like, okay, interesting. 926 steps between our houses. Cut to Carolyn Taylor is at her apartment in Toronto and she realizes, oh, my friend Serena is also in town and has a place in Toronto as well. And they meet up and they're walking and they say, wouldn't it be crazy if our Toronto apartments no. were 926 steps no. apart? They count. It is exactly 926. She she goes, I triple checked. I, I 
they did it multiple times. Who has the time? I was gonna say, are they were they on <laughs> vacation on holiday on Holly Bob's? COVID? <laughs> but it gets weirder. We're so bored. Especially triple checking nine hundred steps. Yeah, that triple go on. checking would be so one hard. time through would, is utterly insane. I, I'd lose count at like three hundred. I'd lose well, interest as soon as somebody said, "Let's check." Let's I'd count the like, steps. Eh. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go home. Yeah. No, but they're at this point freaking out uh, at that. It's yeah, like yeah. that is bizarre, right? What are the chances? Mm-hmm. Then one night they're sitting around and they got uh, Chat GPT, the AI search engine. They've got that up, and they're thinking, "Hey, we we do both have cottages as well," and it's they're a 20 minute drive apart, so they're not 926 steps apart. But we, sh- I don't know. And then my friend goes, "What does it mean when you say as the crow flies?" Like how many flaps of a crow and what is that distance? They asked ChatGBT, here's the two addresses. As the crow flies, how many flaps are our cottages? And it says approximately 900. And they say, well, is it possible it's 926? And it says, yes, highly possible with wind. It could be 926. <laughs> what is going on? That is weird. I, I Your don't. Your friends might be witches. Yeah. Are we, do you think maybe we That's live in a simulation? If it, if we're in a computer program and the programmers are just like, these two avatars are always going to be roughly 926 apart. Yeah, I guess that's probably what's going on. Oh, right. I, I think so. I think May's <laughs> onto something. That's the only, that's the only explanation. <laughs> There's nothing else that could possibly explain this. Gotta be that we're in a simulation. Well, yeah. if any of our listeners though, n- know anything about the significance of that number or, or have any I, i've been googling i can't find well much, september but. 26th is that important to anyone <gasps> that's yes, a good does that mean you anything? should ask your friends i'm writing it down to ask mm. later september 26th i never thought of that okay well i think you need wow. to think about we're that. really on to something here <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. and i don't know what it is that we're on to but it, we're on to something it Wait. feels like we're piecing together something yeah you know the mayans used to used to build things in relation to the calendar and the fortune moon fact and, and fortune the, fact <laughs> and like the like chichen itza doesn't isn't it like all th- 365 steps or something i don't know somebody, <laughs> sure. don't google, know. somebody <laughs> google that i'm a failure dropout by the way i ran up that pyramid chichen mm-hmm. itza you ran you ran up that pyramid yeah, I was uh, in college, and I was studying the Mayan ruins in Mexico one summer with uh, some classmates, and I got uh, dared to run up this pyramid, <laughs> I believe it's 365 steps, um, and it was the middle of summer, you know, scorching hot, and I go, no problem, ran up it, and I made it, and then literally almost passed out and fell off oh, my head. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> worth it. Be- because going up that might professor saw me in the act and said she had a heart attack because going up that high that fast is very dangerous for your body and she said i could have had a heart attack oh my um, god and she so, s- scolded me later but what what happened to uh nerd fortune because it seems mean? like when you were that age right you're kind of oh, like why and- am i not academic well, I'm just saying it feels like something I would have done or May would have done. It doesn't like, feel like me to you would have been caught in the act of anything. Whereas May and I would be like, yeah, I'll go do that. I'll go smoke oh, a cigarette yeah, on the I top of that. Oh, you mean the rule follower in Yeah, me. yeah. I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was very out of character for me to take on a dare or a challenge. And I don't know why. Because I, I didn't get anything like yeah, there was say, no incentive. Only yeah, almost a like heart attack. Can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my friend said my face turned blue when oh. I got up to the top of it. And they and I was like kind of wobbling like I was about to pass out. And they had to ask a stranger at the top of the pyramid if they could have if I could have their water. Oh, my um, God. So Imagine I- if both of your Wikipedias <laughs> ended with these insane deaths. It was like disemboweled by a kangaroo oh, yeah, yeah. and so wait, ran up a pyramid. You weren't you weren't well known yet, right, Fortune? I was not known at so all. So nobody would have ever 20, known that happened. No one would have known. <laughs> yes, it does have 365 steps total. So in, in line with the calendar uh, that the year and um, 
Yeah, I was 20 years old. So no. mm, and yeah. were you going through like a particularly extroverted time where you were like, you know, those like periods of your life where you're like that summer, I was really funny. Like I, yeah, it was pretty fun. No, you were fun that fun summer. on that trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is wild that I, I mean, I was so into history and I spent an, almost a month studying Mayan ruins. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and you almost and what, made what, history. I know. That's right. Yeah. And what Falling we got down Chichen Itza. <laughs> what we got from that was you going, didn't the Mayans kind of build something didn't about the, the calendar? I know. I can't. It's been so long. I'm like, I forgot everything I learned. Your next uh, special should be Mayan, called Falling Down Chichen Itza. <laughs> <laughs> With Kate McCoochie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I remember just like having the best time, but I don't think I was paying attention much to the stuff I was supposed to be learning at the pyramids. To go back to Kate McCucci, oh, yeah. it might mm. bring you some joy to know what that Kate to know that Kate had a show <laughs> for a long time called Playing with McCucci. Oh, there you she go. Did. So she, yeah, so she did. Okay, she's in on it. She's in on it. She's okay, in on it. good. Now yeah, I know better. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Starring <laughs> Kate McCucci and Larry McCooter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, our our question asker today is a friend of Kate McCucci's and and mine. Uh, in fact, the three of us get together often with our children and uh they all come over to our house which we've named silly house oh and it's so fun i can't even tell you kate's son and our guests her son are um younger than than mine and so it's really cute to see um max and finn you know playing the big kids at yeah. uh at the silly house i don't think i even realized that kate had a son yeah, I she does. I knew she had a kid. Yeah, he's four, I think now. Oh, Macu- okay. has been busy. Macucci. Yeah, somebody's been busy playing with Macucci. <laughs> <laughs> when my cats are healthy, they're happy, and that makes me happy. But since I'm not a mind reader, I don't always know when they're unwell. Helping me keep tabs on my cat's health is just one reason that I use Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter's ultra-absorbent crystals trap odor instantly. No more cat bathroom smell. I love that Pretty Litter doesn't get dusty and it lasts way longer than typical kitty litter. My cat's health is so important. It gives me peace of mind to know that Pretty Litter is helping to keep them as safe and healthy as possible. Pretty Litter helps keep tabs on your cat's health and keeps odors down. You and your cat are going to love Pretty Litter as much as Tig does. Go to prettylitter.com slash handsome and use code handsome to save 20% on your first order and get a free cat toy. That's prettylitter.com slash handsome, code handsome to save 20% and get a free cat toy. Prettylitter.com slash handsome, code handsome, terms and conditions apply. See site for details. Maybe you own a home or maybe you're about to become a new homeowner. Either way, you're going to want to save time and money by switching to Allstate for your home insurance today. Check Allstate first and you could save $574 on your home insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in every state based on the national average annual savings for new home insurance customers surveyed in 2023 who switched to Allstate and reported savings. Savings vary. Today's questioner is a TV host, dancer, and fitness, not just a dancer, I have to say. Uh, What is it? Uh, Rockette. She's, she's a right. Yeah. yeah. And uh-huh. fitness instructor who currently co-hosts the talk on CBS. She wrote a best-selling memoir titled live your life and competed on dancing with the stars. Amanda Klutz is asking today's question. Yay. Woo-hoo. Hey, handsome pod. It's Amanda Klutz here. Okay. My question for you is, is there a song from your childhood or your teenage years that if it came on the radio today, you would still know every single lyric to, even though you haven't heard it in years. If so, mm. what's the song and why does it mean so much mm. to you? Great Gosh. question. So I re- I recently met Amanda. I know you guys are friends, Tig, and uh, she was so lovely. I had followed her story like a lot of people from afar 
um, during COVID, she, you know, unfortunately lost her husband, Nick, uh, to COVID. One of the early um, losses that caught the eye of everybody. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. they had such a, she was so positive in the, you know, that experience of that was just such a, a tragic time mm-hmm. for not only herself and her family, but for so many people. Um, and just the, her story and Nick and their family just really like uh, captured the hearts of everybody. And I had admired her um, from afar, just how she has handled that and, forged on in life as best as possible and just seems like a great person it was really cool to 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 meet her and um it 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 is wild in these times to like know someone's story to such an extent and have not met them Mm -hmm. Mm. but you Um, met her recently yeah yeah Mm -hmm. she came up to me and told me that you guys were friends and she listened to the pod and um Mm. uh yeah she just seems to have a, a pretty amazing spirit yeah, I want to. I want to meet her. Yeah, she's she's the best, and um, and I know she's gone to your shows, May, and and um, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, oh, she's nice. She's seen you at Largo, and and thinks oh, you're man. awesome. Um, oh, thanks, Amanda. Did yeah, I? uh, yeah, and Amanda is one of those people who just has that. I always describe it as like their chest is just ripped open wide and they welcome Mm -hmm. all all things into their um heart and soul and Mm -hmm. uh, i love that yeah and i i I, actually my um childhood friend who is my son's godmother um beth she's very similar uh just those kind of people that they're just pure openness and, yeah, and um, just want to experience every aspect of life. Yeah, and, they're just they're yeah. open, they're friendly, they're loving. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm I'm just blown away by that kind of approach. And yeah, mm-hmm. we got to surround ourselves with people like that. Yeah, that, who say yes to life. Yeah, yeah. She's someone who I still root for. Oh yeah, so much. Even yeah. though I don't know her that well, mm-hmm. just having seen what she went through and what you know, the, the amazing love story that, that she had shared with her husband and their, you know, raising their young kid on her own. I just root for her yeah. so much, you know, same, same, same. Me not, uh, not so much me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> May root. Doesn't heart, root for May's anybody. heart is of stone. Just kidding. <laughs> I Imagine. always, I always definitely <laughs> like to remind people though, that even, even as open and loving as Amanda or my friend or other people might be to, to not keep them in this corner of joy and openness, because I think that can be a hard place to crawl out of when you're not feeling Mm -hmm. joyful or open. Um, Mm. And, uh, and that always, it's just something that I always try to remember is that, they are as open and loving as they seem, but also there's to, other shades. Yeah. There, yeah, yeah. People are more complex and, and you should allow that for your friends and your friends should allow yeah. that for themselves. And cause everybody's got a friend who you're like, Oh, so-and-so is coming to the party and she is a joker. She's hilarious. She's so, right. and then they show up and they're like, oh, I'm having kind of a bad day. And everyone's like, okay. Oh. <laughs> you're downer, and you're like, to ruin the party. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. especially <laughs> weird when you're a comedian or. Uh, yes. You yes. Know, An um, entertainer. Inter- entertainer. Kind. Yeah. You're having yeah. a bad day or a bad night or any of those things. And it's um, mm-hmm. understandable from time to time or, um, you know. Uh, yeah just being human out in the world so what Mm -hmm. so amanda's question was about songs from childhood and adolescence if it came on right now you would just immediately know every single lyric even though you haven't heard it in a very long time this is a very weird reference (laughs) there is a singer named martin briley and he had a song called (laughs) i've never heard of martin (laughs) i'm sure most people (laughs) haven't I think he was a one hit wonder in the eighties, Martin Briley. And the song was salt in my tears. And oh my, okay. And it, we got to, 
Thomas, can yeah, we find I don't you know pull this. that up? Uh, and it was you it ain't sounds worth, like a banger right off the top. <laughs> you, ain't like worth the, you ain't worth salt the salt in my tears. <laughs> I think his name is Martin Briley. Um, it is Thomas. Yeah. Oh my God. Can we hear it? You ain't yeah. worth the salt in my you tears. Ain't is worth such a good burn. <laughs> the salt in my uh, yeah burn. I definitely thought it was going to be more like old school, like a <laughs> singer from so- the 40s or something. Oh, yeah, wait, like Mar- Martin Briley? Just, yeah, like that's on the name. Martin yeah. Briley sounds like he was a star of like uh, Little House on the Prairie, or like a local yeah. on Little House yeah. on the Prairie. Like, let's be, go yeah, down like to down Martin home. Briley's house, Martin <laughs> yeah. Briley's farm. That was more um, rocking, like a rock kind of vibe. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Um, I can't believe I pulled up his name, but I kind of can. I kind of can. I, I got well, my that's... song right off the bat. I don't even need to tell you the title of it. I'll just say, here I go. Here I go. Here I, here go, I go again. again. Girls, what's, what's my weakness, my weakness? Man. man? Yes. <laughs> that kangaroo. Song. What's my weakness? Huge muscle of kangaroo. S- salt and pepper. Shoop. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I the problem with the because she specifically said if that you haven't heard in a while and and I just haven't moved on at all in my musical taste. So I'm listening to the same songs from my teens, oh, like "Semi Charm Life" by Third Eye Blind. Oh yes, mm. yes. You know that one. I'm packed and I'm holding. I'm smiling. She lives and she goes and she leaves for me. Says she lives for me. Ovation. Well, motivation. She comes around and she goes down on me and it makes her smile like a drug for you. Do whatever what you want to do. Come on over here. Oh my God, you're going to get a call from Alanis Morissette for sure. Yeah, you are. It's coming. Oh man, I hope I get a call (laughs) from Martin Briley. Is he still alive? Yeah, what's going on? And is he from Canada? I would almost guess that he's from Canada. What if it said Martin Briley died on September 26th? He's English, 74 and alive. Hello, Martin Briley. I knew you weren't from the States. So oh, I here I go, here I go, here I go again. We'll just keep singing that over and over again. He's, <laughs> and so we should get him on the pod. We got to reach out. Martin Briley? So, yeah. Oh shoop, my gosh. Is he still doop, putting out albums? Doop, I love Fortune's that song. Still on, <laughs> Fortune's still on Shoop. You never love me. Push down, <laughs> shut me. Okay, then chilling, chilling. Mind my business. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh dear, so we've opened the real. I can't believe this. I swear, I said, my niece is my witness. The brother had it going on or some kind of uh, wicked, wicked. <laughs> had to kick it. I'm not shy, so I asked for the digits. Oh no, that don't make me see what I won't slip slide to it swiftly. Okay, yeah, like when is the last time you heard that? <laughs> A while, but I love that song. I think the last time I heard Martin Briley was 1986. I feel like people are listening to this and a handful of people are pumping their fists, doing shoop along with fortune. And then mm-hmm. some people are, because there's always someone at the karaoke place who who does shoop. Um, Lick him like a lollipop. Nobody's be doing like Martin Briley. my senses and I chill for a bit. <laughs> oh, don't know how you do the voodoo that you do so well. Here's a spell. <laughs> Hell, makes me want to shoop, 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 a do. You should definitely do Martin Briley karaoke. I I I love that you're just talking um, over Fortune (laughs) singing. I don't know what at this point. I don't know what. Still, may still have a a love hate relationship with me over the Alana song. I just don't know if we have the rights to Shoop. We could get sued. Yeah, I think if I speak sing them, it's okay. Yeah, (laughs) I I went to um, China with my dad when I was twenty, and we went and did karaoke the two of us and. Mm. I, I said, what are you going to sing? And he goes up to the person running the karaoke and goes, do you have tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything sweeter than that? He was like, no, Tony sorry. Orlando, <laughs> right? Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. Twice on the pipes. Is that, that's a different the song. Is no. That's I'm knock three times. I'm thinking of somebody Orlando. Who well, sings that Tony song? Orlando is saying. I thought it was tor- Tony Orlando, is it not? Well, we were talking about tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Yeah, Tony Orlando sings that. Okay, but we, we're not going into just any Tony Orlando song. <laughs> why not? How, why are you not impressed that I know another Tony Orlando song? I'll give, I'll give you some. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus. Did you know Tony Orlando sang Tie a Yellow out Ribbon? another <laughs> Tony Orlando song out of my asshole. And you're like, why are you Fortune. doing that? Fortune. <laughs> Don't make us picture that. <laughs> I was impressed. I'm like, wait, I know another Tony Orlando song. I don't think Tony Orlando is still alive. <laughs> Thomas? Well, I'll Google it. Is Tony Orlando out. still what? alive? Ireland. I'm going to bet my place as a handsome still alive. He's still alive. That he's still alive and he's 80. <laughs> Means you ain't gonna show. Tony, if you're listening. You're probably you. impressed that I know your song. <laughs> I mean, Martin <laughs> Riley. He's got to be thrilled, right? <laughs> I know this is the most love he's gotten. In <laughs> no a offense, Martin. I'm a big fan. You know the yellow ribbon thing around the is old that like oak a tree? story? Yeah, yeah. Is that like a story? Like, why is someone tying the ribbons again? Well, like, what's I, I? I mean, that's kind of like a you know keeping hope alive or in memory of or that kind of vibe. Oh. Um, I, is my understanding is what tying a yellow ribbon around an old oak tree is but um i could probably call oh, up uh, the, a number of Di disney songs from my childhood hold that for one moment the origin <laughs> of the idea of a yellow ribbon yeah. as remembrance may have been the 19th century practice that some women allegedly had of wearing a yellow ribbon in their, in their hair, hair to signify their devotion to a husband or sweetheart serving in the u.s calvary Oh, so it was being like, I'm taking my yeah. guys away. Yeah, tie a yellow away. ribbon around the old hairdo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it might lead to more of more of a riff, but <laughs> Hakuna Matata. But no, it is just what a wonderful. Here we go. Oh, oh, what was it? Ain't no song. passing craze. Here we go. It means no worries right. for oh, the boy. rest of your days. <laughs> It's our problem free uh, philosophy, the kuna matata. <laughs> it means fortune. no worries for the rest of your days. Okay, anyway, I'm just, we just, just made up I, fortune. I just remembered another song. I can from my show you oh boy. The world. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Take you under by one. I got a, I got a whole stack where that came yeah, from. We, anyway, see that. <laughs> what is that '70s song? Something about the smiling. Uh, keep smiling, keep shining. No, that's oh, not it. You mm -hmm. can always count on me. Nope, because that that's what it. friends are for. Do you know who did the voice of Simba in The Lion King? fortune um your mom <laughs> fortune you were that is we so just low. made up that is so low dude dude that is so low how dare you bring may's mom into this <laughs> that is so low man um well i'll tell you it was matthew broderick <laughs> so, really yeah he did the voice of adult simba oh i never knew that wow um thomas guests smiling faces sometimes that's not it it was um, Debbie Boone. She sang it. That was Debbie the singer. <laughs> guys, Debbie Boone? guys, I am you're... older than you. <laughs> you're like Debbie Mickey Rooney. <laughs> oh, speaking Debbie of Boone. Mickey, speaking of Mickey, this morning at breakfast, uh, what is her oh. her smile song? Um, at, at breakfast this morning, I was saying how it just dawned on me, Mickey Mouse. His name is Michael. Oh my God, that's good! It blew good. my mind. I was telling Max Mike, and Michael Finn. Mouse. Yeah. Michael Mouse. Michael Mouse. That's like, really good. <laughs> Michael Mouse. That's really good. I'm a fan of that. And then really Minnie good. Mouse. Is that miniature mouse? What is her name? Minnie. What is Minnie short for? Uh, is it short miniature? For Min well, that's what I just said. Mouse? Miniature. Oh. Did Does you that mean you, the serial killer Michael Myers? Minia you Minneapolis. <laughs> We are all over the place today. We can't. Poor we're both, Amanda. We're, we're we're all telling different jokes. We're Thomas, all in different riffs. Did you look riffs. up what Debbie Boone's song was? Uh, you light up my life. Uh, you light up my, my life. life. Join in, May. You give me. They just took off their headphones. How dare you? Do you know that How song? How dare you? Do you know that song, really May? 
It rings a bell. It reminds me of the lady in red. This is so embarrassing. My 70s and 80s oh, references. Oh, lady in red. I'm like, how about Martin sing Riley and me. Debbie Boone? I'm going to go take cheek. a nap. But that is objectively no better <laughs> music than the music I grew up with. Like, I just listened to my parents' Where music. want to be. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, fortune. Fortune. <laughs> okay, now. I, I don't, <laughs> truly, we just made up. I know. And I know. You're gonna you're May, gonna start the Alanis fight all over again. May you haven't answered this you question yet, have you? Yes, I have. You were too busy. Life. <laughs> oh yeah, the 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 motivation. I answered it. I, I sung it. My I bad. tried to. You know what's move weird on. is Stephanie was singing that song today. Oddly, ask her uh, uh, about uh, nine twenty six. Oh. Uh, <laughs> She was singing that song today, <laughs> claiming it was Sugar Ray. And I was like, no, 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 no dear. That is not Sugar Ray. No, dear. No, no, no dear. No. Um, no. One of our biggest fights to date. <laughs> um, no, dear. Should we uh, hear Amanda's response? Yes, please. we shall. The light of my life. Thank you. And good night. Okay. My answer to this question is the song Stay by Lisa Loeb. I was obsessed with this song. I actually kind of still am. Um, but I just remember being in my bedroom in Ohio, laying on my twin bed mm. with a cassette player and pressing play Say. and then stop and then writing down the lyrics and then rewind, pause, play, writing down lyrics, writing down lyrics. I did it for the whole song until I had the whole song written down. I memorized the whole thing. And I still to this day can see, like, if it comes on the radio, I'm like, I don't listen hard. Don't pay attention to the distance that you're running to anyone, anywhere. Do the whole song. And it just brings me right back to my childhood. And I love it. And I still love the song. Stay by Lisa Loeb. God, that makes me think about the days where you couldn't Google lyrics. You did have to, like, buy the CD and, like, scour through the lyrics in the cd sleeve or you had to do that where you listen to it and write it down as they went i i think that's why i get a lot of lyrics wrong or really you have to scour mm -hmm. through the vinyl sleeve yeah okay. yeah yeah 70s i, I think I, i've i've like made a point of memorizing lyrics before like i, I think that third eye blind one i listened to it and like just totally sat down and learned it when i was a kid i was so deeply obsessed with the Beatles and would listen to them. I'd write their lyrics down. I was at all the time. I was so obsessed. And um, my grandmother, I was visiting her. Uh, she was living with my aunt and she had like final stage of Alzheimer's. And um, she called me into her room and sat me down and thanked me for this uh, poem I had written for her when I was, I think I was maybe nine. And I had to sit there next to her on her bed and take credit for uh, Lennon and McCartney's song <laughs> that I had. No. Yeah, the song When I'm 64. I had oh written Oh my God, she that. thought you wrote she it? She thought I wrote that. And because she was so <laughs> deeply in Alzheimer's, I had to sit there and go, oh, Thank yep. you. Thank yeah, you. I'm glad oh that God. I'm glad you like that. And yeah, that's just for you. Now your grandma's a ghost and going. Yeah, ghost. What? <laughs> yeah. What? You didn't write that. <laughs> I I took credit for the entire Beatles catalog. Um, <laughs> I I did just Google who famous has died on September 26th. Oh, and Jesus. Oh, I know. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, there there is um. A poet called Daniel Boone. And weren't we just talking about a Boone? We Daniel were. Boone is Daniel also a, related to... Wasn't he a, somebody in North Carolina? But also, celebrity birthdays, September 26th. You got Brian Ferry, Linda Hamilton, Serena Will Williams. Yeah, this is the Daniel Wait, Boone in. what was Debbie Boone's dad's name? <laughs> he was a singer, too, I think. Right? I mean, this this episode is like what it would be like if the three of us were in an old folks' home together. <laughs> Pat Boone. Pat Boone. Pat That's Boone. Right. He I was an American pioneer. He's a folk hero of the United States. Mm -hmm. Daniel Boone is? Yeah. I know oh, okay. my Boones. She <laughs> <laughs> knows her Boones. Gosh, this has been quite a journey. It really has Speaking been. of journey... 
Don't stop, stop. believing. <laughs> Hold on to the feeling. We played that, that song, at our anytime wedding. Anytime it comes on, I always know those words. Yeah, yeah man. Um, Streetlight. Speaking of uh, Detroit, or was that a different episode? Was Did you talk about Detroit, Detroit was, today? That was this episode, I think, okay. about yeah. how I don't have a Detroit accent. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that song, they reference South Detroit, which isn't yes. actually a part of Detroit. Born and raised in South Detroit. Yeah. And we played so that. Think he's making it I, he probably just needed to write world. some words for a song. Um, he didn't have Thomas good. there able to Google if there was a South mm-hmm. Detroit. But for our wedding, Stephanie and I went back and forth. She was like, I do not want that song played at mm-hmm. our wedding. And I was like, Stephanie, come on. It is the song of all times. And then I at think the you very, told this. Yeah. Well, here it yeah. comes again. <laughs> here it comes Sorry. again. <laughs> I'm winding it up, man. <laughs> yeah, don't you dare. And uh, yeah played it and uh that was the point in the wedding when the sparklers came out and then to this day max and finn love hearing that on their playlist because that was at our wedding and i'm gonna tell that story again i'm sure that's right (laughs) yeah we had a uh we had a little wedding party and we karaoke'd and uh we sang closer to fine (sighs) and everyone periodically would just yell lesbians uh, during the song <laughs> oh <my God>. uh, <laughs> did well, you yell damn Nat- straight that's right natalie mains was there so she sang it with us and that's really people, nice even though she's not a lesbian everyone yelled lesbians in honor of lesbians that's she, really great she's not a lesbian yet we haven't brought her over to our yeah. side she'll be home soon but that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, sing, uh, singing, singing, freaking closer to fine with Natalie Mays. Also another cool moment of karaoke. Oh man, Fortune, would you sing at my wedding? Absolutely. And bl- <laughs> a blood will start coming out of my eyeballs. I would too. <laughs> my brother made me sing. Oh, at sorry, his... Tig. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, Tig. I'm my happy brother too made... as well. <laughs> my brother made me sing at his wedding, and I'm horrified to this day that that happened. I was in a dress, a um, cr- what is a sleeveless dress? You know, we don't. Yeah, know. A tube dress. Oh. Yeah, no, a strapless, strapless. That's what it's called. <laughs> my hair was back <laughs> in like this, like oh slick bag. Us trying and to they describe a, <laughs> a type of dress. It's I'm like, what's uh, it called? What when is there's it? No like you, There's no like uh, <laughs> you're in like strapless. a tube or something. It was yeah. like eggplant color, and they made me sing uh, Keeper of the Stars, which is an old country song. But I sang it like falsetto, like Let's so hear it. high. Let's like, hear it. It was no accident, <laughs> me finding you. Oh which that God. part's not bad. But then it, it goes kinda to the was. chorus. <laughs> then it goes to the chorus, and I'm like screeching this song in this church. It's like. So I take my hand <laughs> to the keeper of the song. <laughs> he sure knew what he was doing. And I'm just, I just <laughs> Tell me your dress fell down. <laughs> Oh my god! Tell me you had oh it. I did god. not. But that was during my period of my life when I was really trying to be straight. I was gonna say you were looking for a boyfriend <laughs> that night. Yes. If you god. hit a high note and your and your boobs popped out, that would be the greatest viral it, video. It might have. My skin had never seen the light of day. I was just probably like, a, I probably looked like a ghost. If there is any. Uh, moment in life that would cause your boobs to pop out fortune <laughs> can you give me a ring-a-ding and just Please. say i am <laughs> life is teeing me up for my boobs to pop out. yeah nipple gate yeah. yeah if my i i'm here in a sports bra if my boob pops out something had to go very wrong <laughs> <laughs> wait you wear a sports bra every day in life now yeah Yeah. because i don't want i don't want those 
bras with the wires in it? I don't know what you do underneath your. Although we did, <laughs> we do have one sponsor for uh, women's um, brassieres, and I'm trying to get one in my size. <laughs> so I'm going to try that one out. Okay. I hope that at our live show, we do that thing in the horse costume with all three of us and that fortune you're at the front or the middle and your boobs pop out and then our our horse pulls alanis morissette on stage and then fortune's boobs pop out. and then i say i tip my hat (laughs) to the keeper of the stars oh god (sighs) and then there goes my boob god boing boing i feel like i'm on mushrooms today (laughs) And I'm not. I feel like you're on mushrooms today. <laughs> yeah. I also love how much Googling this episode has. There oh, my Google. God. Google it up. All of us just like, yeah. But Amanda reminded us that there was a time in our lives that we didn't have Google, and now we do. Yeah. And great point, that's great. Fortune. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Amanda, for that reminding Lisa us. Loeb. I'm really on board with Lisa Loeb, by the way, that... You I think that was a say, great. I filmed something I in Lisa Loeb's bedroom once. <gasps> okay. Okay. Now say we're more. Well, that sounds <laughs> a little crazier than it actually was. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, in her closet, something like that. Oh, yeah. You did. Anyway, we can, that's for another episode. Um, <laughs> well, that was Write a fun episode. That it was, was yeah, it absolutely was. nuts and fun. I have new material I'm working out. Uh, go to tignotaro.com for all of my show dates. Uh, I'm at Largo, Dynasty Typewriter, and Comedy Bar. That's in Toronto. And then I have just a few sporadic shows coming up um, here and there. But uh, also check out Hello Again, the Emmy-nominated special of mine. <laughs> um, and congrats to my wife, Stephanie, for uh, the the, the nomination. nomination for director mm-hmm. um here yeah. here there I there got, i got nothing nothing live but um definitely check out our our handsomepod.com and uh see we got new merch uh, we're restocking old merch actually yeah. <laughs> sorry that's all right <laughs> um and uh yeah i might do some some random surprise shows in toronto but i'll put them on i'll put them on instagram won't i yes i would like to promote world peace yeah that's nice why have we never done that (laughs) why have we been actively promoting war oh my gosh my my friend my was talking to uh my kids and finn asked her if she could have any superpower what would she have and she said um fly i would fly and mm-hmm. she was like, what about you? And he said, I would cure all diseases. Oh, my and God. She, was, she <laughs> felt so, she was like, oh, my God. I'm saying I would just be up flying around <laughs> and he's curing diseases. He I'm gonna, set her up for that. I was going to fly to hospitals and yeah. bring the medicine. <laughs> so funny. Oh. What a podcast. What, what a, podcast. a podcast. Send an episode, <laughs> send this episode to a friend and say to subscribe to this because that's, people are like, don't ever stop doing this podcast. Well, guess what? If you subscribe to it, that keeps us going. Send it to a friend. Mm-hmm. That keeps us going. Yeah, send it to Martin Briley. Yeah. Don't stop podcasting. All right. Well, uh, until next time, huh? Eh? Keep, Keep it handsome. Keep it handsome. <laughs> Home insurance can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. With Allstate, you can save time and money by switching your home insurance. They make it so easy to switch, you're going to be asking yourself why you waited so long to do it. Check Allstate first, and you could save $574 on your home insurance. You're in good hands with Allstate. Not available in every state. Based on the national average annual savings for new home insurance customers surveyed in 2023 who switched to Allstate and reported savings. Savings vary.